Hello and welcome to your five minute or so Manchester United news, transfers and gossip column with me, Seb Parkinson. Yes, it's a little bit later in the week this week, but I've been busy, so deal with it. Kicking off today is the report that Jim Ratcliffe will invest his own wealth into the club than that of Ineos, according to Bloomberg. Ratcliffe has told shareholders at Ineos that the bid to acquire a stake in United will be financed through his own personal wealth rather than using company funds. It is claimed creditors at Ineos were told this by executives at Ineos Quattro. While the United venture is seen as a private project, in inverted commas, Ineos shareholders Andy Curry and John Rees are expected to be involved in Ratcliffe's investment as they are with Mercedes F1 team. Next up is the story that is gathering pace on social media via The Sun, linking David De Gea with a sensational return to Old Trafford just months after he was released by the club in favour of Andre Onana. It's no secret that Eric Ten Hag likes to have a strong contingent of stoppers in case of emergency, and with Onana heading off to AFCON in early 2024, it would leave Ten Hag with only Bayende, who is yet to make an appearance, and Tom Heaton, whose long-term fitness is not something the United boss is able to rely on. De Gea has been spotted in and around Manchester a lot of late, and he's yet to sign for a club, despite being one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Further increasing speculation, he may be on the verge of a return to the club he spent the majority of his senior career with, even if it is on a short-term backup basis, similar to what we saw with Jack Butland last season. Rasmus Hoyland has opened up on his summer move for the first time, speaking to Tyrone Marshall at this very publication. He said, I know my worth. I know I have to perform every day because I play for Manchester United. In the end, I am only 20 years old and I am not the finished article yet. I still have a lot to improve and I'm getting there slowly. Hoyland has scored three goals for the club so far, all of which have come in the Champions League. Despite not yet scoring a Premier League goal and with Manchester City to come on Sunday, Hoyland is relishing the future, citing, I've tried my very best every time I play and I still need to find the rhythm. We have been struggling a little, but we are getting there now. We have had three wins in a row. So that is very positive. If you want to read more on Tyrone's bloody brilliant in-depth interview, Pause this video, head over to the NBN website right now. The link is in the description. Harry Maguire has opened up on his difficult period he has faced. This comes off the back of a real surge in form for the England international who has played three games back to back for United for the first time under Eric Ten Hag, a stat that shocked me when I heard it given he was club captain for the whole of last season. Speaking after the win over Copenhagen, a game in which he scored the vital winning goal no less, Maguire told MUTV, I'm just really happy to help the team win football matches. I've been professional over the last year or so. It's been tough for me, not playing as much as I have throughout my career, so it's been different. But that's football and playing for a big club. You have big competition. We have a lot of competition at centre-back with some top, top quality players. I do believe that, so it's a really important part of the season for me. But it's only the start and I'm ready now to kick on, help the team and I'm really looking forward to Sunday. A bit of transfer gossip now, and as you know, we all love a bit of transfer chat. First up, Jesse Lingard reportedly won't be joining Steven Gerrard's Al Etifak in Saudi Arabia, with his wage demands being the reason cited for that. Team Talk have reported that United are willing to agree a fee of at least £61 million for highly rated Benfica midfielder Jao Neves, who has been dubbed the Casemiro replacement. Nevers is a player I covered on this column just two weeks ago, suggesting there could be something in this speculation, so watch this space. Liverpool have joined United in the race to sign highly rated Schalke midfielder Asan Uidraogo, according to a report by Calcio Mercato. The Germany under-17 international is being linked with some of Europe's biggest clubs, including United, and has enjoyed success largely as an attacking midfielder but can also slot in centrally when needed. His market value lies at €6 million, Euros, but if the transfer does come to fruition, expect that figure to treble at the very least. Calcio Mercato are also reporting United's interest in the €20 million Euro rated 25-year-old central midfielder Tajani Reinders of AC Milan. The Dutchman made his national team debut in September, and has four caps to his name to date, making his first start for his country against France in a 2-1 defeat on October the 13th. Just a reminder here that the Manchester is Red podcast is available to watch on YouTube and listen to now wherever you get your podcasts. It's one of the best podcasts you will ever hear. And no, I am not biased. <laughs> 
And finally, before I sign off, there's an injury update on Kobe Mainu, which may get United fans' juices flowing ahead of the Manchester Derby this Sunday. He should be fit, at the very least, to make the matchday squad. However, I'm not going to second guess Ten Hag with that comment. Mainu returned to training on Monday and played in United's UEFA Youth League clash with Copenhagen at Lee Sports Village on Tuesday, suggesting he's ready to make a return to the first team any day now. That's it for today. For all the latest injury news ahead of the derby and wall-to-wall -wall Manchester United coverage, head over to the Manchester Evening News where all these stories and more can be found. But before you do that, don't forget to like, subscribe, drop me a comment in below on whether you're enjoying these videos. It really does help my already out-of-control ego grow. <laughs> anyway, I've been Seth Parkinson, you've been you, and you know the drill by now. I hope you have a great day wherever you are in the world. Whether it's the legendary Lionesses, grassroots or expert analysis of the women's leagues, Women's Football News has it all covered. A brand new monthly magazine packed with news, interviews and expert opinion. Don't miss Women's Football News. Pick up a copy today from participating retailers. Women's Football is here to stay and so are we.